Rotten Run was not born for uh, use with teens. Um, Christopher Golden, who was a good buddy of mine, good writer, and also an anthologist, to some note, um, was doing an anthology called The New Dead. And he wanted, you know, he reached out to me to write a story. Each of the writers was asked to write a story that was outside their comfort zone. Up to that point, I had never written a story with a teenage protagonist, and I had never written a post-apocalyptic story up to that point. So I wrote a story about, you know, two brothers, one is a teenager, one is an older brother, who don't get along, but are living in a post-apocalyptic America. And uh, that story, um, Family Business, was in the anthology, got pulled out on a lot of reviews, which really surprised me. I mean, I got a lot of enthusiastic, you know, New York Times and other, other reviewers. And my agent, who doesn't usually read my short fiction, saw so many of the reviews, read this story and said, you know, this opens, this is basically the opening of a young adult novel. And I'm like, no, it's not. And she said, yeah, it really is. And I, she said, what's the last young adult novel you read? And I said, To Kill a Mockingbird in the seventh grade. So she uh, sent me a bunch of young adult novels to show me what young adult fiction had become. And she said, I just want to take this out and, uh, and shop it as the opening. And uh, she wound up getting an auction going and Simon & Schuster bought it. And uh, the editor at the time, the late and much missed David Gale, um, at Simon & Schuster, as he as we're usually when an agent has closed a deal with the editor, the editor then calls the writer and they have their first conversation. And during that conversation, he basically said, this isn't one book, it's four. He got back on the phone with my agent. Suddenly we had a four book deal. Now it's a seven book series. Um, and uh, again, they're making a movie out of it. Um, but it was a chance for me to explore the dynamic that I went through as a kid. Because when we meet Benny, he's not a likable kid. He has a very skewed worldview. He's intolerant, unfairly intolerant of his older brother. Um, and you know he's just not the kid who should be the star of the book. But I look at my own life when I before I met my that librarian in seventh grade, I was learning about the world through my racist father. I was not a likable kid. The only reason I had friends is we're all in the same neighborhood. We're all the same growing up experience growing up. So I wanted to explore that. Like what happens when your worldview was shifted so hard that you can't not see it anymore? You can't, you know, do you choose to not? go there because it does, isn't as much fun or it isn't what you want, or do you choose to keep your eyes open? And at the point at which Benny first op you know, first gets a view of what the world is really like, he can't go back again. He's that, that's, he has that moral center where he, he has to accept the truth and he winds up earning his right to be the protagonist. But also I want to explore, you know, there's so many uh, zombie stories set during the apocalypse and shortly after, not too many people had written something post-apocalyptic. At the time I wrote the novel of Rotten Ruin, there were only two YA novels out there for kids, for teens. Uh, Reapers of the Angels uh, by Alden Bell and um, Forest of Hands and Teeth by Carrie um, Ryan. And brilliant novels, but, you know, and they were post-apocalyptic, but that was it. So Rotten Ruin came out. Um, had boy protagonists as well as girl protagonists, which it attracted boys to reading. So it won a ton of awards for uh, for reluctant readers. It won a lot of these statewide awards for, you know, picked by the kids as their favorite book of that year. Kind of surprised the hell out of me when that was all happening, because I just wrote the book I would most have enjoyed reading when I was 15. Any favorites from the sequels that followed from that rest of them? Uh, oh, boy. Um, Probably my favorite book in the entire series is Flesh and Bone um, because Joe Ledger enters the story at that point. Um, he's 65 years old now. He's the one character that is going to survive any crisis. And I, I needed an older mentor who was not Benny's blood relative. So I loved writing that book. Plus I had a lot of cool stuff in it. I had a lot of adventure, um, ends on a, a hell of a cliffhanger. Um, so that would be my favorite of them. And then within the, the book, uh, the, the short story collection, Bits and Pieces, there was a story called Rag and Bones. And I really loved that character and that story. And we'll probably go back and write more about her. 